granite mountains and sandy beaches, even the necessities for life, such as the water we drink and the air we breathe. You created all things and you said that it was good. Come, Holy One, come. You emptied yourself of all power and privilege and took on the form of a human slave, dwelling among us, teaching, healing, bringing the light into darkness and manifesting your glory. Come, Holy One, come. You who came not only to be with us, but in us. This morning, we inhale your presence as the Creator breathes the Holy Spirit into each of our hearts. Come, Holy One, come. Come to all of us in ways that are majestic and powerful, and yet in ways that are most intimate and personal, that our faces might shine with your glory, so that those who see us will wonder what happened, and our only response will be that surely the Lord was in this place. Amen. We will now have our hymn of praise, Peace Will Come One Day, by Dr. Joe. myself. There we go. This is a very exciting time now uh, for us and for our congregation. Um, today, um, we um, are accepting new members into our church. Uh, and the following persons have indicated their desire to unite with us in this household of faith. 
and they are here to profess their faith and to join us in serving Jesus Christ. Becoming new members today are Asante Ewers, Faith Lawrence, Stephen Wasco, James Leeson, Linda Leeson, Fran Roth, and Karen Rizzolo. Also, Louise Kirsten became a member earlier and couldn't be with us today because she's in Germany. And others may be joining today uh, that we don't know, but who have decided to become a part of this family of faith and will agree to, um, to go through our new members class later. But hear the words of our Savior. You did not cho choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Everyone who acknowledges me, I will also acknowledge before our, our creator God. My sisters and brothers in the faith, Jesus Christ has chosen you and in baptism has joined you to himself. He has called you together with us into the church, which is his body. Now he has brought you to this time and place to unite with us in the ministries and blessings of this congregation. As you come into our midst, we invite you to confess your faith for the first time or to reaffirm your faith as members of the Church of Jesus Christ. Do, do you confess and reaffirm your faith in God as your Creator, and Christ as your Lord, and the, Holy, and, the, and the Holy Spirit as your strength? If so, would all those who are planning to join say, we do? Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God, and enlisting in the work of this congregation as it serves the community and the world? If so, say we do. At this time, we would normally say the historic fate, a covenant of our church together. That will happen when each member or new member comes in to sign the covenant book in the coming weeks. But for now, do you affirm the covenant of our church? And will you promise to walk by God's grace together as, God, as God's family in all the ways that God reveals to us as we continue our journey as a pilgrim people? If so, say, we will with the help of God. Now let us, the members of First Congregational Church of Stratford, United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry. I would ask the members of the church now to repeat after me. And if you were able, without a lot of background noise, to unmute yourself and join me in this welcome. And would you say, please say the words after me. We welcome you with joy. We welcome you with joy. As partners in the life of this church, as partners in the life of this church, we promise you our friendship and prayers. We promise how much you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors. As we share the we share the hopes and labors journey together. Our together. God grant that together. God grant that together. We may continue to grow. We may continue to grow. In God's knowledge and love. In God's knowledge and love. And together. And, and together. And together. Be witnesses of our risen Lord. Witnesses of our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And now in the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of our congregation, 
we extend to you the right hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the company of this congregation. Welcome all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I'm going to move. And now, let us... God, you who are reflected in how we love each other as a community, we give you thanks for these special gifts you have given to us. And these people who have decided to join this family of faith and to walk with us on this journey. We pray for them as well as for all of us, young and old, that we might be thankful, that we might be faithful this day, that we might do justice and walk humbly, that we might care for the vulnerable as if we were caring for you. May the Spirit of God lead and guide us all, using our gifts together to truly reflect your presence and manifest to the world what it means for us to pray on earth. That Andy is with us, and for all the answered prayers for him and for all those who have been sick. Help us to love as you love, to forgive as you forgive to give of ourselves and our belongings as you have shared your life with us, and to realize as a community that love never fails. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, now I would like to speak to the children among us. So, listen up if you're there. You know, Jesus tells us over and over again that he wants us to do good for other people. And it's kind of hard to do a lot of things to reach out to other people while we're home and not being among other people. So I was trying to think of ways that we might be able to reach out even while being in our homes. So what I did yesterday was I got out my crayons and I drew a picture. And I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this picture to my children's grandmother because they can't see her. She can't see them right now. But I thought it might cheer her up and it might be a way to reach out even though we can't be together with each other. So if you're looking for a way to reach out and show love to other people, maybe some crayons and a piece of paper will help and just draw a little picture or a simple note saying, I love you, and send it to somebody that you think might need that little cheering up. And I think that's one way we can all reach out, even while we're staying physically distance from one another. And now I will share with us our first scripture lesson today, which is Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? 
How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. May God bless those words to our understanding. So I want to say thank you to all who offer up money through pledges, which help us in planning and setting our budget. And I want to thank those who donate spontaneously to support the mission of this church. In these days, we're encouraging the convenience of EFT withdrawals. And we also have several ways um, that you can donate through our website. If you go to the website at firstchurchstratford.org. And join me in a time of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, bless all who give, whether by money, food donations, volunteer time, or prayer. Receive these gifts that they may become seeds of hope and love in your beautiful but hurting world. Amen. As we give thanks for our many blessings, we will hear Jubilee by Sam Williams with images of the beauty of nature found at Holmes Camp. Oh, won't you tell me how long this will last? Lend you my soul and repent all my past. Lord, don't you think that it's time we're set free? So lay down a path towards Jubilee. That it's time we've learned to stay close. We've learned your good lesson of what matters the most. It ain't about riches and it ain't about power. you please end this darkest hour are failing, our safety net's gone. We've 
started to see what we've been doing wrong But I'll trust in my neighbor to do what is right So Lord, won't you please end this tonight Greetings. It is good to see so many uh, familiar faces. Uh, and it's also lovely to see so many faces that I don't recognize because that is the sign of a church that is vibrant and growing and alive. And it's wonderful to be a part of it. My, um, I was baptized, confirmed, and ordained at the First Congregational Church of Stratford. I'd like to take a personal moment and thank the entire church and everybody who's been so supportive to my mom and my family in the last month since my father passed away. They have both been uh, deeply involved, my mother, her whole life. And it's, um, it's wonderful to see that she has been so well remembered and taken care of, especially during the time of COVID when it's difficult to grieve with family. So thank you very much for being um, our family. I appreciate it. Uh, the sermon that you're uh, about to see was uh, filmed for camp, uh, camp worship a couple of weeks ago, um, but uh, I think it's still relevant to what we're going through. Um, so I'm going to start with the scripture, which is uh, Matthew 10, verses 40 to 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me says Jesus. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Welcome to Holmes Camp. Good morning and welcome to Holmes Camp and Retreat Center. We are so glad that you could join us this morning for worship. That Psalm, which is basically saying, how long God, how long do we have to wait? Where are you? Oh, we know that in the past there have been times when we couldn't see your face but you were there all along. We're grateful for that. That was the psalm. I was like, yeah, I guess we can work with that. And then the gospel lesson this morning is whoever welcomes you welcomes me and the one who sent me, says Jesus. And then Jesus kind of goes on to flesh that out a little bit and says, you know, if they welcome you as a prophet with a prophet's welcome, then 
they'll get a they'll get a profits reward or a righteous person will get a righteous person's reward or if they give one of these little ones a cup of water uh, their reward will be secure etc etc now interesting when he says little ones we think children and that makes sense right because Jesus talks a lot about the children let the children come unto me and that is literally children but in this passage a lot of scholars think that little children actually refers to uh, a way a term of endearment that Jesus is using for his disciples as he's getting ready to send them out this is the end of a long discourse basically Jesus takes a look around says there is a lot to do I can't do it all I need help I need to send out my disciples to do the work and I will continue the work that's a good lesson for those of us that feel like we have to do it all ourselves, right? So Jesus is going to send them out into the world and he's getting them ready. And some of the things he says are really actually difficult um, to understand, difficult to take in, uh, and are deserved of study. But here we are at the end of the discourse and Jesus is sending them out. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And that feels like camp because when it's Sunday night and we are welcoming campers into camp, we say you are welcome here no matter who you are or where you are on your journey you're welcome here we celebrate our differences we try to uncover how we are different and how we can learn from one another and by the end of the week are able to recognize that in our own language we're looking for christ in one another we're looking i'm looking for christ in you and hopefully you can find some example of christ in me by my own faith being lived out and by your faith being lived out in the real world and we figure out when it doesn't work out so well, how to grow together. That's what camp is about. It's about learning to take our faith and not just have it be a set of beliefs, something that we think, but actually something that changes the way that we live in the world. Now, if it turns out Jesus actually was talking about the children, that works too, because Jesus often talked about people who were not considered to be part of the dominant culture. Children, women, people who were ill in body or uh, were sick, people who uh, were slaves, people who didn't have power in a domination system that started with Rome and came through the rich folk of his time. So either way, when Jesus is welcoming, it says you will be welcomed and the little children, uh, you will get their reward it works. But what is that about reward? I want to tell you a story, true story, about a young man who called me about two weeks ago and just said, you know, Brian, I, I, I've got great news. And this is a young man that needed some good news. And he said, I got a job and it's a job I really wanted. And I prayed to God that I would get it. And I got the job. And so and I can see that means that God is on my side. Well, I had the wisdom not to stop and say, well, I don't know if God necessarily works that way because in that moment he needed God to be on his side. So I said, I'm so glad you got the job. I'm so glad that you're sitting in prayer. Um, congratulations. A week later, same young man calls me and says, I lost my job. I, what? Well, he'd hurt his hand playing basketball, dislocated his finger, was unable to use it, and they said, I'm sorry, you can't do this work at this point so we're gonna find somebody else so he said I don't understand I prayed I thought God was with me and then this happens and that's part of the problem with sort of that idea that if we believe and pray and ask the right way for the right things that God will reward us maybe I'll get that good parking space because I believe the right things Faith is not necessarily just about believing the right things. It's about how those beliefs change our behavior, make us think about things in a different way. How do we welcome in everyone, including people who are different than us? There is a human tendency for us to gravitate towards people that are like us, whether it's socioeconomically like us or whether it's education level like us. Um, and now most of us probably have friends that are not in those same places but right now our country is in a very very difficult place as people who have been suffering for years with the way things are the status quo are finally saying once again because it's not the first time enough and I am hoping that we come out of this pandemic slash time of unrest 
changed, not the same. That we come out of this welcoming and also letting ourselves be welcomed. Because remember, when Jesus sends out those disciples, he's not saying, this is how you welcome the stranger. He's saying, you are the stranger. He's teaching how to be a gracious guest. Let's think about that just for a minute. When you go to someone's house and you are a guest, there are roles that we play, whether we know it or not. Now the host might be very gracious and say, you know, would you like a cup of coffee? How would you like it? Would you like it with milk, soy milk, no milk? Or would you like sugar or a sweetener? Uh, so they're trying real hard to make you feel comfortable. Now you, as the guest might be, oh, well, I'd love to have a cup of coffee if you're making it anyway, but don't, don't make it just for me. You're also trying not to be any trouble. You're trying to be a good guest. But we also recognize that the host kind of has the home playing field advantage, decides if we're going to have coffee or not, decides for the most part what the evening is going to go like. Um, this is not to say that the host isn't gracious, but it's just understood. That's the way things go. And wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have hosts and guests in our communities? But we do. And some of us who are of a lighter skin have whether we know it or not, been brought up to believe, for whatever crazy reason, we're kind of the host. You know what? It's time for us to be the guest. Jesus is teaching us in this scripture, learn how to be a good guest. And that means listen. And with what's going on, I want to tell you a story from my own life. It's a hard story for me to tell, but it's relevant at this particular time. Some of you may know that I have a son. He's now 20 years old and he is biracial. We're a biracial family. Although he presents as black. If you saw my son, you would think that this is a black man. And when he was adopted, there was a form, a big long form that was filled out and we got to race. And we could literally check boxes of people, uh, children, babies, based on the color of their skin. Who were we willing to accept? And you know, thinking our love is enough to overcome whatever may come. We just said all of the above. And we did that with great um, open hearts. And I wouldn't change it because it brought Eric to us. We were also naive. And it has taught me a lot about what black people go through or people of color go through that white people have no idea. I still can't claim that I really know what it's like, and I wouldn't. But I have seen, I have front row seats. So let me tell you about the first time I, I had an actual experience where I said, here we go. Many of you probably who are parents have rituals that you put your children to bed with, or if you, when you were a child, maybe your parent had a ritual of putting you to bed. And I had that ritual with Eric, and it was my night, and so we um, read a story and then we talked about the day and then we sang a little song that we sang every night before bed and then we said our prayers i tucked him in kissed him on the forehead turned around walked diagonally across the room out the door and i closed the door but not all the way so i could still hear but enough to keep the room dark and that's when i heard this tiny voice that didn't sound like eric but it just said Daddy? So I opened the door and I went in and I said, yes, Eric, what is it? And there was a long pause and he had his sheets over, so just his eyes were showing. And he said, I don't want to be brown. I felt the floor open up underneath me. What to say? At four years old, already imprinted that something about him was not okay? that he was not the child of God that I knew him to be? How could that have already been imprinted on him? How could he already think that he was not good enough because of the color of his skin? So I opened the door more and I walked in thinking, I don't know what the right thing to do is, you know? A lot of our parenting is we do it on the spot and pray to God to guide us. I picked him up and I held him and I rocked him. And I said, you remember that walk that we took today? And we had, in fact, taken a walk that very day. 
out uh, on a nature trail. And I said, remember when you were pointing out all the flowers to me? And some were big and some were small and some were purple or red or, or blue. He said, yeah. I said, God made every one of those flowers. And they're exactly what they're supposed to be. And they're all beautiful, aren't they? They're not the same. They're different. And that's exactly the way we are. We're just the way God wants us to be, which is perfect. And you are perfect and beautiful. And I held him. I can't remember how long. But I knew at that moment that what I thought was coming down the pike was here at four years old. So we knew that this was going to be the case, that we would have to find ways. We lived in the state of Maine. Now, I have love all sorts of people in the state of Maine, more than I could possibly count. Um, but it's a very white state. I mean, it just is. And so we had to look for opportunities for Eric to celebrate um, diversity, to celebrate who he was. We moved to a town that had both uh, a college and a Air Force base because we thought there would be more diversity in the schools, and there was a little. And uh, I, we started to go to a church, which was uh, basically people of color in the city of Portland. And I grew up in the church, you know, I know church. I'm a minister, um, I've been to church camp my whole life. We did this for my son, but I can't tell you how I was transformed by this church. The spirit moved through this church. Nobody cared about it being an hour. These services were an hour and a half, two hours plus, and the time flew by. And when we walked in that door, Eric was immediately scooped up and told, Oh, you beautiful child, uh, we are so glad you're here. And everybody looked like him. And suddenly, I and my partner were sitting there being the odd ones out. And um, that was a good experience for us. And it was, um, again, one of the most spirit-filled uh, church experiences I've ever had. And we went back again and again and again until eventually we got involved with another church professionally. Um, but I'm very grateful that Eric had that experience and that I had that experience. So, faith is not just about belief, as I said. It is about behavior. It's not necessarily about self-understanding, but cultural and historic awareness about our undeserved privilege for those of us who are lighter skinned. We tend to think of ourselves as the hosts, and it is time for us to be the guests. And what I mean by that, it is time for those of us who are white, to be quiet and listen, and listen with open hearts. And when we feel a defensiveness come up, I didn't do that, I don't feel racist, I don't, to realize it's not about you, it's about a system, it's about something much bigger than all of us that we all have to work together to change. I want us to come out of this time truly welcoming. I want this to be a welcoming place. I want the Presbyteries to come here and we can work together and listen to one another. And we better be ready to hear stories of lamentation. How long, God? How long will it go on? How long? Where are you? We cannot see your face. But like the spirit in that church, we trust that you are here. We have experience that you are present. And yet, we have to be ready to listen to some very difficult experiences. That's important that we take that responsibility and listen and then ask ourselves, what do we need to do to change things? What do we have to give up? What ways do we think of the normal as the way things are without even realizing it? Now, I know most of the people watching this who might be uh, white are not thinking, well, I'm, you know, I'm racist. No, no, most of us don't, right? That's the overt racism that we all look at and can say that's a terrible thing. But this subtle, systemic, just the way things are racism, I once had a seminary professor describe in a way that stays with me and I want to share it with you. We were talking about racism and he was clearly someone who was not carrying you know, a racist attitude in his heart. Um, but he said, oh, I would never say that I wasn't racist because sometimes if I'm walking down the street, I, I get nervous if the person coming at me is of a different color. And I don't like that about myself, but it's true. 
So I try to use the model of recovery. And by recovery, I mean from addiction. I used to be an addiction counselor in Waterbury, Connecticut. And that model, for those of you that know it, usually you don't say, I am recovered. I am better now. I used to be addicted and now I'm not. It's a daily awareness. I am not recovered. I am recovering. And my professor said, I like to think of myself as a recovering racist, that I have to be vigilant every day and look for those signs inside of me where I feel like I have privilege or when I have fear or when I get defensive. And when I see that, I need to lean into it and I need to talk to the people that will help me to understand my own set of privileges, my own fears, uh, my own acceptance of the way things are. Our scripture this morning is about lamentation and about understanding that God is present with us and it's about Jesus saying, whoever welcomes you welcomes me and the one who sent me. And so if we're going out, we need to listen as much as we need to preach. Now I know there's an irony here of some white guys standing up and saying, hey white people, you need to stop talking. I get it. But that's where we are. So friends, thank you. I, I pray that your church will be involved at this place when we are back online. And by that's ironic, huh? I pray that your church will be a part of the recovery process here and that we can move forward together boldly and that Holmes Camp can be a part of your own churches and your own individual expression of wanting us to be a more just world, a more just people, a people where there are less hosts and guests and more people of community, where we learn from our differences and we celebrate them. Whoever welcomes you in my name welcomes me and the one who sent me. Amen. Well, thank you for listening. I know that was a lot to take in. Um, we're going to continue with our common commitment. Um, I'm not sure if we say this together, Meg, do we say this in unison? So because Zoom is a difficult thing uh, to get unison on, I will say um, a line and why don't you say it back? We're, we're all muted, Brian, so that you can just, just say, oh, it. say it. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering no one evil for evil, Strengthening the faint hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, go forth from this space committed to looking at your own life and your own attitudes, committed to welcoming in the stranger and to being welcomed, that we might reach a place where we are neither host nor guest, but one community of God, community of faith together, and let us help one another on that journey. Gracious God, be with us all as we go into this week. Amen. Shalom to you. Shalom, my friends, may God's full mercies bless you, my friends, in all your Christ be your shalom, Christ be your shalom. Through your 
Christ be your shalom. So now I invite you to uh, unmute yourselves and we can have a few moments of virtual coffee hour if you'd like. Actually, I have cold water, but oh. I did not us this morning. And thank you. <laughs> I, I, I was there. That was a very moving and very inspiring service. Thank you, Brian. Good to see you. Yes. Thank you, Brian. You're Thank, you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. That was a special blessing. Yes, absolutely. It was. For the week ahead. Yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you for sharing. Well, I was glad to be asked. Hey, Brian. You know, you were talking about uh, racism as recovery. I've often, uh, through the years, thought of it as kind of like having diabetes. It's something you always have to be, you know, you're never cured, but you're, you're constantly being vigilant and constantly doing the right thing to at least never, you know, it's, uh, but I, I love that as recovery. I thought that was powerful. Yes, yeah, they're both good metaphors. Help us, help us get there. Very nice. 